The sons of Laban say, look at how he's stolen everything from us. And what did the Muslims say all around him? They've stolen this land from us when they were the ones that cheated the Jews. It's, everything is backwards from the Bible all the way through to current history based on the Jewish people. And you know what? I would hate... I would hate to sit and teach what I'm teaching right now in like the Episcopal Church because they probably throw me out of there. Oh, the Jews are terrible and they're all, they're cheats and they're, listen, those people went in there at the cost of their lives, their children's lives and their wives' lives and they have reestablished the land that God gave them. And this goes all the way back to this ancient enmity of the peoples around them being jealous of the Jewish people instead of saying to the Jewish people, listen, we are so happy that you're here and let us all participate together, which we've done up until recent times in America. We have accepted the Jews. We've been the greatest hedge of protection around them. And all of a sudden, this changes. And now we're starting to get jealous of the Jews. Overnight. And, overnight. and they have they developed um, a, a farming uh, technique. Absolutely they have. They have shared with the, anybody who asked. And what does it say? They've exactly. given it to him for free. And what does it yeah. say in the book of Isaiah? It says, fruit from you will be shipped to the whole world. That's a misquote. But that has happened in our lifetime. There wasn't anything there. And now they have got miles of orange groves and bana bananas to the right, mangoes to the left. I got to tell you, that was, that was our, uh, our uh, tour guide in Israel who now is very sick with cancer. But what a nice guy. And when you'd go down the road... Whenever it's on the left, he'd say, bananas to the left, mangoes to the right. You get a little farther and he'd say, cows to the left and mangoes to the right. And they, just the funniest guy. But anyway, poor guy's V, he's, uh, he's got terrible cancer now and he's really suffering. He could send me a one-line email. He's probably so, uh, so miserable. So we'll be keeping Zvi in prayer. But anyway, same thing. I don't mean to divert too far, but that is what's happening. Then that is what's happening in the middle of the Bible. That's what's happening at the end of the Bible. The Jealousy of people against the blessings of God or misusing the blessings of God. Or, it just, it's, it's just the Bible is filled with this and we're contaminated with it. So anyway, that's, go ahead, please. Verse 2. And Jacob noticed that Laban's attitude toward him was not what it had been. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Go back to the land of your fathers and to your relatives, and I will be with you. Okay, before you go on, first, uh, Jacob notices that Laban's a little anxious at him. He's probably brusque. It's like the boss that, you know, I'm doing so well that his boss is looking down on me and saying, gee, good job, Charlie, and kind of passing over my boss. And my boss would now start getting a little sour. That's what Jabin is, Laban is like. He's just, you can, you can see that he's just not a happy guy. Something, something's happening. Somehow I'm getting cheated, but I'm not sure how it is. And so he's just not happy. All of his flocks are weak and they're not as numerous. And Jacob is being blessed. And then it says here, have to take it that this wasn't ever changed in history. This is the Lord's word. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers, okay? So it's the Lord that is directing his steps. This isn't something, you know, somebody could say, well, that was added later by the Jewish people, you know. No, this is the Lord directing the steps. We have the inspired word of God. So, okay, verse 4. So Jacob sent word to Rachel and Leah to come out to the fields where his flocks were. He said to them, I see that your father's attitude toward me is not what it, is, it was before. But the God of my father has been with me. Okay, the word, um, what is it, uh, your father's what? You just, mine says countenance, yours says what? No, no, attitude, okay, attitude, okay, mine says countenance. The word is face, and it kind of is the same uh, thought as when you hear the, uh, let me go to number six real quickly, and I'll read this to you, and uh, it's, it's kind of the same attitude that you will see throughout the Bible. When somebody's face is turned towards you, it's a blessing. Or when their face is happy, it's a blessing. So I'll read you what's called the Burkat Kohanim, or the High Priestly Prayer, in number six. It says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Okay, so the face being directed towards somebody in a favorable manner is a blessing. Okay, in this case, Laban is not happy with him and his face has changed towards him. Okay, go ahead. Um, you know that I have worked for your father with all my strength, yet your father has cheated me by changing my wages ten times. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
God has not allowed him to harm me. Okay, so that is where I said earlier we're going to see. What has happened here is it's not written in here, but because of what he just said, in his, he's not going to lie to his wives. His wives are going to know everything that's going on in the family. So obviously this is what's happened. Laban sees what's going on here. He says, well, something's happened and my, my sheep are starting to make, instead of white ones, are starting to make speckled and, and uh, you know, whatever, uh, black and all these abnormal things. So what Laban did is he says, okay, from now on out, you get all of the white ones and I get all of these, all right? And he did this 10 times over the period of what, however many years, I think it was 24 years, so six years, seven years, whatever it is. He, Laban, keeps changing this. And every time he changes it, all Jacob does is he takes the flocks out there and he just puts out the poplars in front of the other ones. Instead of the white ones, he puts in front of the black ones. And then Laban changes the wages again. And so he puts in front of the white ones instead of the black ones. And so yeah. he's just doing his thing, making, he's looking out for his own family. You know, I mean, that's just what he's doing. But Laban doesn't like it. And so he says, okay, this isn't working. So, and he changes it and he changes it. So what is the significance of 10 times? Anybody, have you noticed that anywhere else as you've read the Bible? Ten is a, like a period of testing. In Daniel, it says, um, uh, test us for ten days. We'll eat only vegetables. And if our countenance, uh, real quickly, I think it's probably Daniel two or three, we'll go there. And you'll see this again and again and again in the Bible that the number ten is uh, I'm trying to think, oh, forget Daniel. You know the story. Daniel was told uh, um, they didn't want to defile themselves with the king's food. And so um, uh, they asked for 10 days of testing, of eating only vegetables. And if they look good, then the eunuch will say, okay, you don't have to eat the king's food. But the eunuch didn't want to do it right off the bat because if they came out looking unhealthy, then he'd lose his head. And he was afraid of that. But we'll go back to the book of Revelation and um, let me see if I can find this here. It's in the seven letters to the seven churches in Revelation. And we're looking for, Jesus says, testing you for ten times. And this is, this, quite a few times you'll see this in the Bible. Um, let me see if I can find this. My Bible is falling apart so badly that I'm, my pages are almost rolled up into a scroll. But let me see if I can uh, find, if you see it before me, just look in the seven letters to the seven churches. And he mentions uh, being tested ten times. And uh, you will persevere and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, it's the number 10 in, is a period of testing. But let me open door, hour of trial that comes upon the whole earth. Let me see here. Um, if you see it, it's 10 times, and it is definitely in the book of Revelation of the seven letters to the seven churches. Uh, oh, here it is. Uh, verse 10, 2, 10. It says, Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation 10 days. Now, does that mean literally 10 days, or is it symbolic of a time of testing? Okay? Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. So you're going to see, I just want you to keep in mind that numbers in the Bible are always very consistent. When you see the number 10, it is normally a time of testing, okay? And he was being tested 10 times as wages were uh, changed, and yet he was faithful to stay and continue working, waiting on the Lord. Finally, the Lord said, go. Okay, verse 8. If he said the speckled ones will be your wages, then all the flocks gave birth to speckled young. And if he said the streaked ones will be your wages, then all the flocks <laughs> were streaked young. Okay, now, what does this tell you? He's explained that the father has changed the wages, and he's explained it to his wife. His wives would have known that... Uh, their father had changed the wages. He probably went home and says, you know, he changed it. Or maybe his dad says, your husband is really making too much money on changing the wages. The children would have known. But what does it tell you about the second half, that verse he just read? It tells me. It says here, if he said thus, the speckle shall be your wages and all the flocks bore speckled. And if he said, the streak shall be your wages, then all the flocks bore streaked. They knew that the father had changed the wages. But they didn't know how this was happening. He never clued his wife right. into what he was doing. Right. Putting the poplars and stuff in there and breeding them. He kept that his own secret. I don't know if that's right or not, but that's how I read that. Because he never said, 
you know, I was able to make them. In other words, he kept something back and didn't tell them how he was being blessed. That. What's that? Go oh, okay. Uh, verse 9? Yeah, 9. Thus God has taken away your father's livestock and given them to me. Right. God did it. God did it, okay. And so it, it's possible that God actually gave him the, uh, the wisdom uh -huh. to do that with the poplars and everything. But they didn't know that. And why would he not tell his daughters how he was doing that? Cause more strife. Than well, that's true, and he already knows there's trouble between the wives, oh, yeah. right? So what if one of them really gets mad at Jacob, what are they going to do? They're going to go tell dad. So he kept this yeah. back as he, he was, you know, when it says he was a deceiver, he knew exactly where to hide things and how to manipulate things for his own benefit and for the benefit of his family and his children. But I'm not saying that this is doctrine. I'm just saying this is how I read it, okay? I haven't read any commentaries on this, but when I read these particular verses, I do see it in this manner, okay? So go ahead, verse 10. In breeding season, I once had a dream in which I looked up and saw that the male goats in this flock were streaked, speckled, or spotted. The angel of God said to me in a dream, Jacob, I answered, here I am. And he said, look up and see that all the male goats made with the flock are streaked speckled or spotted. For I have seen all that Laban has been doing to you. Okay, now that tells me what we've been talking about is probably right. Once again, I don't want to insert anything in here, but it tells me that, that he had a dream about the speckled and the spotted and the this and the that, right? And that God is the one that showed him how to correct what was being done. In other words, God gave him the, the, the wisdom of understanding to put, take care Lil, uh, to put these plain trees and these different trees into the troughs is that in other words it's it's an old secret that he knows but it probably came from the Lord because the Lord knew that he was being cheated by Laban so in order for him to become prosperous in the way the Lord had promised I'm gonna prosper you this is what he showed him to do I'm not saying that's doctrine I don't want to you know uh, give uh, assign something to God that may not be correct but that's just how I'm perceiving this, okay? Is that the Lord was behind his wisdom in being able to get the flocks to benefit him in the way they did. Okay, go ahead, Ken. I am the God of Bethel, where you were anointed a pillar and where you, were, where you made a vow to me. Now leave this land at once and go back to your native land. Okay, so he is acknowledging that the same God that showed him that vision before he left the land of Israel, not only is... Uh, keeping the promise of blessing him, but he's also the God that is not just the God of Israel, but the God of the world, because God is manifest outside of the land of Israel as well. Okay, now remember when he said, if you do these things, you will be my God. Well, he's letting him know that I'm your God even outside of Israel. And the reason why I bring that up is because I have heard this. Is it 11? No, it's 11 o'clock. I've heard this, um, that... If you take some of these particular passages from Daniel or Zechariah that point to something about Jesus or point to something that is, uh, uh, you know, something the Jewish people won't understand. Now, I, I don't want to say that this is true, but I've heard it from a secondhand uh, person. Actually, this guy was a Jewish Jew. He's the guy I went to Israel with, but he had heard this from some of the rabbis, that they say because Daniel was written outside of the land of Israel, it can't be fully trusted. And because Ezekiel was written outside of the land of Israel, it can't be fully trusted. Okay, I, I just keep that in mind. God is the God of the universe. He's not the God that dwells in the land of Israel. And if anybody makes that, and I have to believe that what I heard was true, because the guy is Jewish himself, and he came to Jesus as Messiah when he was 20s or 30s or whatever, and he was a great, great servant of God. Zola Levitt is his name. He's dead now. But um, uh, they will say that the inspiration was not valid because it wasn't received in Jerusalem. They have to come up with some excuse. Oh, sure, they got to come up with excuses that's because he's saying so clearly point. Well, that's what it is. But this is also what's being said here is that he's saying I am the God that appeared to you back at Bethel, which is Beth house El God, the house of God. All right? He's saying I'm the same God and I'm telling you what to do now. I'm not just a local God the way you may have been perceiving. That's why we talked about this either last week or the week before. I'm not entirely sure how clearly they understood that the God that they're dealing with here is actually the only God in the universe. 